Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll talk about the detailed structure of the female branch or the head. We have seen the structure of the male head or branch. So if we talk of the female branch or the tip which has the head. There are few things which are similar to the male head but there are many different things. One thing which is similar that this is also slightly convex and all around it, it is surrounded by those large leaves. So the function of these leaves is same, it is going to protect this structure. The central part is going to have the female sex organ. The female sex organ has three parts. As we can see here, there's a stalk. Then there's a swollen part which is called venter. And this long elongated structure is the neck. So there are many such female sex organs and they are known as archegonia. We will draw the structure in detail but this is an archegonium and in between these archegonia are present the paraphyses. So paraphyses are similar with one difference that they are say unbranched multicellular but the tip is not swollen. In case of male head paraphyses had the tip which was swollen that means the terminal cell was the swollen cell. So here they are just long hair like structures which are multicellular with elongated cells. So these structures are the paraphyses. Now if we see the detailed structure of this archegonium we find that there is a multicellular stalk with which it is attached to this particular head. So this is multicellular stalk. Above the stalk there is a swollen part and this swollen part is called the venter. So this is the venter. In the venter the wall is made up of few layers of cells that means it is solid and in the central part there is a large egg which is placed. So here there is a large egg. Now let us come to the neck part which is the elongated part. So this neck part is a long structure and its wall is made up of six vertical rows of cells. That means if we assume that this makes a vertical row of cells, there are cells and this is like one row then there is second row, then there is third row, fourth row and this is how the six rows would be there and there would be a space in between which we call the canal. So here there are six vertical rows of cells. So these cells are going to be like this but they are arranged in six vertical rows. The canal that means this space in the middle is filled with cells again. And these cells are, their number is also fixed, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So these 6 cells which we have drawn, they are actually the canal cells. And these canal cells are also 6. The wall of the neck is also made up of 6 vertical rows of cells. And in the center, in the canal part also, there are six canal cells which are filled. So there is no empty space as such. And the lower part of the venter is filled with this large egg. So this is how the archegonia is uh, seen. And there are many archegonia here. We have seen the formation of the male gamete also. So if this is the male gamete which is biflagellate, we normally call it the sperm. The sperm is going to swim and for this only water is required. That means 
Funaria requires a thin layer of water so that these sperms can swim up to the egg. Now when the sperms swim, what exactly is going to happen? These sperms have to enter from here. Now how would the sperms know that they have to reach that particular stage or that particular area? This is done, this movement is known as chemotaxic movement. Chemotaxic movement is always because of chemicals. That means there are certain chemicals which would attract these sperms. So from where are these chemicals coming? So what happens is when the sperm reaches here, the canal cells, the canal cells, they dissociate. And when they dissociate, they release three things. They release mucilage. Mucilage is a slimy substance which is going to lubricate the path of the male gamete. So as the male gamete reaches here, these cells, they start to dissociate. A mucilage, you know, substance is formed through which the sperms will enter into the canal and up to the venter. The second is malic acid and sugar. These are those two chemicals which are responsible for attracting the male gamete up to the egg. So now when the male gamete reaches up to the egg, fertilization is going to take place. So fertilization is oogamous type. Oogamous means the egg is large, non-motile, but the male gametes are small and they are motile. So when it goes here, this is the place where fertilization takes place and zygote is formed in the winter. So after this fertilization, this egg will be replaced by a zygote. So after fertilization, this changes into zygote. And this zygote is going to give rise to the sporophyte. And that is why we said that the sporophyte always grows on the female branch. Because egg is on the female branch, fertilization is going to take place on the female branch. Zygote is formed here and this diploid zygote, this is diploid. This diploid zygote is going to give rise to a sporophyte. The division which takes place in zygote is mitotic. So sporophyte is a diploid structure. So gametophyte on which this male and female branches were there or the sex organs were there, that was a haploid part. After fertilization, zygote gives rise to a diploid sporophyte which would always remain attached to the female branch. So from the zygote, we would forget a sporophyte. So zygote, which is diploid, is going to give us a sporophyte. This sporophyte is also going to be diploid. Now if we think of that fertilization has taken place, zygote is formed here and now the sporophyte develops. So from here we find three things. There is a part, this one, I'm using different colors so that we identify these three different parts. Then there is a long structure and it ends in a swollen part. This is that swollen part. So the part which remains embedded in the neck part is known as the foot of the sporophyte. This long structure, this is actually much longer than the foot. This is known as the seta part and this swollen part is called the capsule. So the sporophyte has three parts, the lower foot part, then the seta part and the capsule part. Capsule is a highly complicated, a complex structure where the spore formation is going to take place. And this sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte. Now in the next part, we'll see the detailed structure of the sporophyte, especially the capsule.